Hello, good people. My name is Doran Freer. I am a philosopher and I am warning you, do not study philosophy, otherwise you might end up like me, a person who's unqualified to do anything other than, you know, talk about other people, what they're saying, uploading weird stuff to YouTube. You don't want that. You don't want that for yourselves. Although I have to say I quite like it. So what I'm going to do today is react to Elika LeBond's take. She had a recent viral video about Israel-Palestine. Now I am going to be critiquing her argument, philosophically speaking, and not critiquing her opinion. I like Alika LeBond's opinions. She's been on Pierce Morgan multiple times. She's very eloquent. She's very sharp. I once went through her debate live and I've noticed that she was the only one out of all the panelists who's actually addressed the arguments properly. So I expect good things. Let's see how she does. By the way, should I talk about the fact that she's like an Iranian who lives in the United States, I believe, or is it in Great Britain or both? And she's basically against the Islamic Republic regime of Iran. And she's quite knowledgeable about these issues because she's from the area. Can I tell you what I'm not doing anymore? I'm no longer pretending that these people don't know exactly what they're doing and that they aren't doing it on purpose. If you haven't seen this clip of Tana Hesse Coates on the Trevor Noah podcast, watch this. Well, I, 20 years old, born into Gaza, which is a giant open air jail. If my little sister has, you know, cancer and she needs treatment because there are no, you know, facilities to do that in Gaza and I don't get the right permit, she might die. And I grow up under that oppression and the wall comes down. Am I also strong enough? Well, I say, this is too far. This is the age-old alliance between leftists and jihadists. Okay, so a, a bit of historical context here because it's probably relevant to what she's saying, although it's not philosophical, but I feel it's still important. During Iran's Islamic Revolution, there was indeed an alliance between the leftists and the Islamists. It's a personal agenda. And let me explain how I know that they know what they're doing. ta Coates is representing as an authority on this matter. Going on TV, talking about it, on podcasts, even having written books. You do not become an authority on this matter without having done extensive research. And if you did the research, you would have come across the facts to debunk your position. You didn't miss the facts. I know that when you said, gee, if I were Hamas and I was subject to a blockade, I know you didn't miss the fact that that blockade was imposed in 2007 after Hamas took control of the Gaza Strip, an internationally recognized terrorist organization. So we've seen two arguments, actually. One is accusing that person, I forgot his name, uh, accusing him of basically lying because she says, if you're an authority, then you must know that uh, X, yeah, that Hamas took over the Gaza Strip and then the blockade was imposed. And... Uh, Basically, if you're an authority, you know that. And because you ignore that, you're lying. So that's argument number one. You're a, li a liar based on that and that. And that's a sound argument as far as I can tell. If you accept her premises, then the conclusion is valid. That's what makes an argument sound and valid. And her next step in the argument actually does not directly address anything that that guy was saying. But what she's essentially doing is she's saying that the blockade is legitimate. That's what she's saying, that the blockade on the Gaza Strip was legitimate because Hamas is an internationally recognized terrorist organization and because the blockade was imposed after Hamas took over the Strip. So basically, these are two arguments. So far, they're valid, completely valid. Let's see how she does further. You didn't miss the fact when you said, gee, had if I were Hamas and I was subject to a blockade by air, land and sea. I know you didn't miss the fact that they were smuggling weapons from those very ports. I know you didn't miss the fact that Egypt has the same blockade for the same fears of smuggling terrorism in alignment with the Muslim Brotherhood and militancy. I know when you sat there and said jihad, if I were Hamas and I didn't have access to good hospitals in Gaza, I know you didn't miss the fact that Hamas embezzled millions and millions of dollars of the Gazan people's money not to build hospitals, invest in medicine, science, advancements, no. 
but to build complicated networks of terror tunnels underground, missiles, weaponry, rockets. When they invested those millions into terrorism, you missed the fact that that's why Gaza doesn't have good hospitals. She keeps developing that thing I said before about the, her main argument being, as I've said, that you're lying. Because if you're an expert and if you've written books and if, you do, if you've done all that, then you know these facts. And by not mentioning these facts, which are important, as per Alka's opinion, then you're essentially just lying. You're just, you're lying. She keeps doing that, but also she's, not only is she effective in her argument philosophically, she's also effective in her speech, right? Because she's, she's building her speech like a story, right? Because it's A happened, but not only A happened, also B happened, but not only B happened, but also C. And, and now that's not a, a philosophical tool. It's a, it's a tool of sophistry, basically. But, you know, you, one can have a bit of good uh, sophistry, right? It's, it's good to be articulate and provocative and persuasive, right? And then you want to tell me if you were Hamas and you couldn't access those hospitals in a different country that you have no business accessing and have all of the means to create for yourself. And then you came across Israeli civilians. You want to say, gee, I don't know if I could help myself but to shoot a four-year-old in the face. I don't know if I could help myself but to rape innocent people. I don't know if I could help myself but to snap their necks, throw them on the back of a truck and spit on their naked bodies. I don't know if I could help myself but to drag their naked bodies in the street on motorcycles. I don't know if I could help myself but to capture a family of five and make them watch as I killed each of their children one by one. I don't know if I could help myself but to set them on fire. I don't know if I could help myself but to kidnap innocent people and hold them in terror tunnels for 10 months. Again, so it sounds good. We feel like it's a good speech, basically. It's a good story. But is there some... Is there anything philosophical behind it? Is the argumentative power strong here? And the answer is yes. And I'll explain because essentially she's, she's done a move here. What she's done is essentially show that one thing doesn't have to lead to the other. She, she's shown how absurd it is, right? Because first of all, she said, you're complaining about the fact that you can't access all these things. And now I will show you, I being Alika, I will show you why you have no business complaining about these things. Because you could have accessed hospitals and you could have lived a good life, but you've basically squandered it by being a jihadi terrorist organization and by being ruled by it. Okay, so that's move number one that she's made. But that's actually not all, because there's another move that she does after, in which she says, even if I were to accept all that, Right? Even if you, you want to cry about your bad conditions, whatever. I do, she doesn't accept that. But then she goes, even if I were to accept that you cry about all that, it still doesn't follow that if you were to enter Israel, you have to shoot civilians and kidnap them and kill them. Right? So she does it in an articulate manner as if she's telling a story. But she's not just telling a story. She's also conducted a sound logical move. If you don't know that you couldn't help yourself, you don't need to be speaking to Trevor Noah on a podcast about faux liberation movements. You need to be under a 5150 hold, okay? Danger to self and others. If you don't know that you could help yourself, you don't sound like someone who belongs at the forefront of a liberation movement. You sound like someone who belongs in the asylum. Again, it's an effective tool for speech right? It's, it's an effective tool to make people resonate with the story you're telling, but it's also logically sound, which is why I kind of like uh, Alika. Normally, she does a pretty good job at this. I mean, many people, they tell a good story, but if you were to dissect the argument, you would find that it's, it's, it doesn't really hold anything. This is precisely my point. How much evil, in furtherance of their own agenda, can they disguise under humanity? How much evil can they disguise under liberation? How much evil can they disguise under resistance? Okay, so now she's moving on to a different 
thing. That's a now that's a new move that we're seeing. The new move is something like let's put it like that. Given that I, Alika, given that I have shown that basically what you're saying makes no sense, I am going to assume that you are hiding evil under that agenda. It's quite a leap. You know, it doesn't logically follow that just because someone made a logical error, that means that he's hiding evil. I mean, just because an argument isn't 100% logically sound doesn't mean that the conclusion has to be false. It only means that it's not necessarily correct. The thing is, though, when you break down their logic or reverse it, it just doesn't quite check out. If I were to say, you know, if I were an Israeli and my grandma was killed in the Second Intifada and my mom was killed by Hamas, all of these surrounding neighboring countries were attacking my entire country's existence. Constant terrorist attacks, not just by rockets, invading, killing us by gunfire, constant October 7th, even before the creation of the country, constant pogroms and attacks, October 7th, after October 7th, even before that. So that's another new move, but it's more logically sound than the previous move she's made. Because what she's doing now is she's showing that the logic doesn't check out if you swap the actors, right? Because she says, well, you're telling a story, you've tried to tell me a story in which you know, woe is me, you're so poor, you have a terrible life, so you can't help yourself but kill people and be terrible, etc. What she's probably going to try to do now, right? She's, she's going to try to flip it. She's going to say, well, what if the Jews were to have a terrible life, right? Would you say that if I were a Jew, you know, I couldn't help myself, I'd have to kill people? You wouldn't say that, obviously. So what she's doing now is she's showing the logical fallacy of the other side by just swapping the actors and seeing that they get, uh, they, they will probably come to a different conclusion. And if that's the case, then she's proven once more that her opponent's arguments are not valid and not sound and kind of stupid. Now, how does that relate to the previous part about hiding evil? You know, it, it feels like it's related, but I can't see like the, the logical knockout yet. So let's see if she'll be able to pack it up nicely before the end. And if not, it, it was still pretty good so far. And then after my grandma was killed, after my mother was killed, I came across a family of innocent Arabs, a young child. Can I tell you how I'd finish that sentence? I'd take care of that child, give them a hug, because that is a fucking baby, you fucking psychopath. If you finish that sentence any differently, you're not a thought leader, you're not a humanitarian, you're not leading a liberation movement, you're not the good guys. Yeah, so basically she's done what I expected her to do. That, but that's a terrific move. She didn't, uh, she didn't tie it up to the evil thing yet, right? Because she said you're hiding your evil behind something. So let's see if now in the concluding part of her speech, let's see if she's going to tie that up. Because uh, normally I wouldn't expect anyone to tie it up because, you know, people speak, they say this thing and then they say that thing and it doesn't necessarily add up together into a, a flawless logical move, let's say. But, you know, Alika, I have a good feeling about Alika. I've, I've heard her speak before and, you know, not necessarily just on this topic. Normally, she's very consistent and I always have the suspicion, like when, when she's talking, I always have a suspicion that she's like reading something out of a diagram that she drew because everything fits, fits so neatly together. So let's see, you know what? Let's see, because so far it's good, it's not perfect. So she has to tie up that evil thing, a thing about, you know, hiding evil. And if she's able to do that, well, you know, I'm not going to reward her in any way, but I can say kudos from here. But all of a sudden you want to get inside the mind's eye of the jihadists and say, well, I wonder what compelled them to be bad because they definitely aren't bad on their own. They're just misunderstood when all of a sudden you're invested in the eternal why behind jihad, knowing that it didn't come from Western imperialism, knowing 
that the reason is nothing but evil, power, control, domination, supremacy, racism, bigotry, greed, fundamentalism, extremism, indoctrination, when you know that's the reason. And then you sit there with the eternal why behind jihad. You're not doing that by accident. You know what the best part about this is? This man, Trevor Noah, okay? By the way, we've, we've seen the tweets, Trev. Okay, that was ad hominem. I, I don't know if it's that relevant to the discussion. Uh, what she's referring to is that the host of the person, the person who hosted the podcast that we saw in the clip before, basically there's been some tweets that surfaced about, uh, he made some jokes about Jews or about, I don't exactly remember, but he's like, an, you know, something that looks pretty bad. And now people are using this to show that he's like an anti-Semite or whatever. It, it, you know, it might be relevant to the occasion. It's not, it's not necessarily a bad thing to bring up if you're trying to make like this a statement and to sound great, but it's not logically connected. By the way, not anything that's not logically connected is bad, right? But logically speaking, that doesn't win any points for me. As I've said, I'm critiquing the philosophical take, not my opinion of her opinion had the nerve to sit there and say, I'm just so angry for ta Coates for being accused of extremism. It's Trevor Noah himself who once said, I prefer the obvious monster to the invisible monster, because with the invisible monster, you have to invest all your time and energy into fighting to prove that the monster exists. Well, let me ask you something, Trevor. Trevor with the tweets. What do you do when people don't see the visible monster that's right in front of them. What do you do? Again, with this Trevor with the tweets, I, I don't like it. But what she's doing here is she's essentially saying that even, even Trevor's argument is false. When Trevor says, I prefer the invisible monster to the visible monster, um, he maybe he has a point but what she does is says okay let's assume you're correct let's assume that we prefer the invisible monster what you have here is a visible monster in the form of jihad that you can't see so she directly addresses the argument that the person made she's not strawmanning well i don't know she might be strawmanning because i didn't hear trevor noah's argument but it does seem like a, a quote in context from what i can tell here so that's essentially what she's doing. It's a pretty good move again. I, you know, I, I don't have a problem with it. So let's see where she goes. Is that an accident that they don't see the monster right in front of them? Is it an accident that they don't actually think it's a monster when it's time to scapegoat the Jews against the Western world and align with the Islamists? Is it that they don't see it? Or is it that they see the monster? They support the monster? And they know exactly what they're doing. That tied up back to the evil part, right? Because she's, she said she's connected that, well, you see the monster and you know exactly what you're doing. So that makes you evil. So that connects to that point earlier in which I've had a problem because I, I said, well, I don't see how the evil part, hiding the evil connects. So everything ties up neatly. That part about being evil, I don't know. Like, if it's 100% sound, like, uh, how did you jump from that to them being evil, right? But I still tend to see Alika's move as great. You know, her speech kind of wrapped everything up. There's no, uh, I'm not surprised that it became viral. So I am going to rank Alika as this specific clip, philosophically speaking and logically speaking. It's either a nine or a ten, and I have I have a feeling that I'm never going to, I'm never going to give this grade ever again, probably on this channel because things like this are quite rare. So we'll see. But it's it's a really good one. Um, and as as once again, as I've said, I'm only ranking her based on her philosophical take, like not based on my opinion of her opinion. So that's what I have for you today. Stay away from philosophy. And have a good one. Good people. Thank you for watching.